Deirdre uh, stayed with us during the uh, minister's speech. And can I pick up on one of the things that uh, the minister talked about? He described that role from academia to high growth entrepreneurship as, as the road less traveled. How significant is big ideas in, in starting people on that road? And how important is it to be in at that very early grassroots stage of a, a nascent idea? Sure. So, I mean, it's absolutely paramount. The, our future is around convergence of technology. It's around deep science. It's around, you know, technology and innovation, which is really, really high risk. So, if you don't, if the state doesn't support it, and if we don't have that investment from government, and this is, you know, government-backed investment in science, technology, and innovation has um, been core and central to our national strategy for decades now, that is the foundation of innovation which allows us to differentiate ourselves in global markets. And particularly when you look at the, the cohort that are here today, yeah, we have research teams that come with really good ideas. We, we, we don't fund any research. It's really important that the teams that approach us um, and that get commercialization funding, that they've validated it, that there's a real need, there's a market need, a customer need, and I suppose from an Enterprise Ireland perspective that they can become a global company, you know, that they can trade internationally. And really what we're trying to do is to help them to de-risk that research idea, to get it to a point where the investment community will then come on board with On us. the topic of risk, that was another thing <laughs> the Minister referred to was the environment in which we're in at the moment, because we have that high inflation environment, there is the um, issue in Ukraine and possibly uh, beyond, and there is a, a fair degree of global instability, the like of which we haven't seen in, in a decade or more. In that context, do you think that it it limits people's desire to leap into entrepreneurship or it, it creates the volatility that facilitates it? Well, if, if you look back, you know, um, uh, you know, war is the best time for innovation. In general, you know, I mean, some of the best ideas come out of challenging times and I think this is no different. I mean, look at the, the COVID pandemic, like, you know, the, the, the ideas and the research around the first COVID vaccine that all of us got was actually was founded on intellectual property out of Oxford University, working in partnership with industry. So, you know, history has shown us that in times of crisis, if you look to really good science and technology, you can come up with really good solutions to the problems that we're, you know, that we're facing. You talked about the... Um the need for government support in, in creating that growth path. You cited a couple of, the, of examples of very successful companies who have been at Big Ideas before. The impact of the investment, how does it tend to work? Where do you see it start to flow once it comes into the company? What impact do you see it having? So as, you know, as an Enterprise Ireland person, of course, I'm going to talk about the return on the investment and you know, impact in terms of jobs and employment in regions. I and mean, we saw all of the data. But me as, a, as an individual, like I see it all of the time in terms of some of the solutions that are being provided and you're going to, to see it today, the societal impact for the solutions that we're, we're, um, that we're funding. You know, so everything, you know, and again, it resonates with people what we're doing in terms of supporting health care ideas. What I think is great about the current um, cohort of pitches is we're seeing solutions which are targeting, you know, carbon footprint, it's about energy cost savings, we've all got bills to pay. So, you know, we're seeing trends where there's opportunities, where there's new um, markets have opened up, you know, and five, ten years ago, um, those technologies and those solutions weren't probably nearly as investable as they are now because we're facing so many global challenges, we have to come up with new innovative solutions to that. And what's interesting about the investability is it, is it is symbiotic both for the investment company or for the, the VC, for the company itself, for the research team themselves, and for the state, because it is, it is a profitable exercise for the state as well as for everybody else. Yeah, so again, we're funding research ideas. So when Enterprise Ireland funds these big ideas, what we're doing is we're funding brilliant people, scientists, commercial people within the university system. But all of the intellectual property is owned by the university. And a critical um, stage in terms of transitioning that idea out into a commercial entity is there's an agreement put in place between the founding team of the new company and the university where the, comp where the university gets a return on investment if that company is successful. 
And the other critical part of this is that the university takes um, a, a, an equity stake in that company. So, you know, so we are looking after the, the public interest here. And it all has to be done in terms of fair um, market rate. So Ireland is quite unique in that we've got a really consistent, what we call knowledge transfer system. Um, and that is where we have, so irrespective of where a founding team comes up with an idea in Dublin versus Galway versus Cork, in terms of that agreement that gets put in place, there is set terms that um, are standard across Ireland. And we're actually the envy of the UK and America because what it means is that founding teams know that they're getting is the same fair uh, terms and deals irrespective of where they've generated And then there's idea. essentially an, an EI pipeline that is then available as the company scales in the early startup yeah. phases. Yeah, absolutely. So every year we fund um, roughly 40 to 50 projects and we watch them those projects on their journey for about two years and again we're funding people i know we're funding great technology but to be honest a lot of this is about the individuals and the teams around these um, because a lot of it is outside of our control in terms of technology development this is high risk research so we're trying to help them on that journey to de-risk the technologies that they've got but we're also trying to de-risk it from a commercial perspective and get them um, investment savvy. So bringing that commercial wherewithal and acumen, you know, we, we have some teams that are brilliant and they come with commercial leads in place who've got all of the business and maybe not necessarily the science and technology. But a lot of our research ideas, we've got brilliant scientists um, that really are, um, it's about changing their mindset and getting them to become much more entrepreneurial in their approach. Well, I'm intrigued by that because you talked about the, um, I was saying you set a high bar for the, the 12 who are coming up because we one company that is is tapping into a market of a quarter of a billion people, one company that's already in partnership with the Mayo okay. Clinic, just to name two, yeah. and we'll see more as we go on. But when you look at that kind of um, shift from being an academic and a researcher to that, what do you see as the big challenges that the, the researchers go through? What are the sort of the phases in that shift? Um, oh, so, so, I mean, they have a number of challenges. I, honestly, when we go and when we talk to the research teams, um, changing their mindset, because a lot of these um, researchers are brilliant scientists with really, really good ideas but not every idea is a commercial proposition. So a critical role that we play is working with those research teams and sort of managing their expectations around how they can differentiate their, their products in the market. How are they going to make money out of that? And you know what? That For people who are brilliant at science, having to start to answer some of those market questions um, can be quite challenging. And that's why we have a role to play in all of our mentors and our advisors and the investment community. And before they even knock on our door, the, the technology transfer offices and the universities are their first port of call to start um, getting them to And how the early do you begin that thinking? Because there, there's, I assume to some extent, there is a threshold that is crossed between the purity of scientific research for research's sake, and then the commercialization where you have to begin to tailor that to what's your available market and what's the scale of your market. Is it best that that is done early or does that limit the, the research activity? Do you know what I mean? I don't think it's ever too early to start getting people to think with an entrepreneurial mindset. Whether they continue to stay within the university system, whether they go on a startup journey, or actually whether they go out into industry in Ireland and beyond, because all of those skills are going to support them irrespective of where they ultimately land in terms of their career and going forward. So, and it comes out as part of Impact 2030, at this moment in time within the university system in Ireland, researchers are being incentivized to do brilliant research and, and science, and they are measured on the whole, now it's changing, but on the whole about their scientific and peer publications, which is brilliant because you need excellent science. But I, for us and what we're really pursuing and we're working with the um, the Department of Further Education and um, with the higher edu education institutions is trying to change it so that our researchers within our universities, that they're incentivized to do commercialization within the universities and that they have a career path that allows them to do that um, within the university system. Um, 
And when, again, when we look at it, the reality is, is that most researchers ultimately leave the university system. Only about 10% of them stay on in tenured um, research um, positions. So coming back to your question, is it ever too early to start getting people to think about their entrepreneurial skills? No, I don't think so. Quite the opposite. From your perspective, from, a, from an EI perspective, from a venture capital perspective, how do, how do you handle the element of being spoiled for choice? Because if you look at the variety of big ideas that we've touched on already, I mean, we have everything from miniature pumps to intervene with um, heart control through to AI video analysis through to macular degeneration treatment. That's a hugely broad church when it comes to the ideas. In one way, that's a great advantage. In another, it's a challenge. You know, um, it's, it's really <laughs> interesting, Anton, but we... Um, when I talk to promoters that have gone through the commercialization fund, right, they say that the scariest part of this was actually applying to Enterprise Ireland for funding. So, um, yeah, and, and some of our, our um, you know, most successful deep tech startups would say it is because we, we've an open call. So it doesn't matter what sector. It, it really doesn't matter what, what sector you're targeting, what your end market opportunity. If you can convince us that there is a really good proposition here and that you don't need all the answers, by the way, because this is still high risk, but you have to be able to show and articulate that you believe there's an opportunity, that you believe there's a need, irrespective of whether it's digital or IT or manufacturing engineering. As long as you can convince us and the panel that are, are looking at your application that there's a compelling business opportunity, our doors are open. And we know that a lot of those aren't going to succeed, you know, that actually they are high risk, they won't overcome the technical challenges, they might overcome the market challenges, things could change. But you know what, it isn't, we don't pick and choose. You convince us it's a good business proposition that's going to lead to a new startup and our doors open. And is it your assumption, is it your supposition that there are good ideas within and there's great potential within the research existing in Irish third level institutions that aren't coming forward yet? Of course, of course, of course there are. I mean, I, today is a brilliant day to, I suppose, to communicate and to raise awareness of the fact that we are here, um, you know, um, in terms of if you think you've got a good idea. And I think the the Clinical Innovation Award is a really interesting one, right? Because I think within our university system, we have really good um, technology transfer offices. We've got our teams on the ground. And so it's easier to navigate who you can go and talk to if you've got a good idea. What we're trying to do with the, cl with the Clinical Innovation Award is we know there's great ideas within our hospital system, right? And so what we're trying to do is put a call out to healthcare professionals who aren't dealing in research every day and say, you know what, if you've got a good idea, come and talk to us and we'll help you to decide whether it could make a new startup. And briefly then, from the point at which that engagement happens, so from first engagement, if it is successful, if you say, yeah, there is a really good yeah. idea here, the, the, the steps from there to commercialization? <laughs> Okay, so the average project that we would fund um, would be two to three years. So all of these, um, the, the 12 big ideas here have been with us for at least two years. Um, we do fund what we call proof of concept as well. So we know some of these technologies are going to take longer. So we might fund them for a year and then say, you know what, hit this technical milestone and come back. And we look to do follow on funding um, with you. Um, and then really once, on average, on average, um, it takes about two to three years from their research idea to getting them to a point where we're at today. And what we're trying to do then is minimize the gap between them leaving our fold within the research and innovation division and becoming high potential startups. And you know what, if, if, uh, if we could minimize that gap to, you know, days and weeks and so that they become investable startup opportunities, that's success. Deirdre, thank you very much. That has been Thanks, fascinating.